welcome. This is sermon number 48 from True Love Chapel, based out of Las Vegas, Nevada. We are an online Christian video preaching and teaching ministry, um, aiming to, you know, understand the Bible better. We've been following the ESV study Bible reading plan, going through the entire Bible uh, this year in 2016, learning a lot, and uh, I hope you would get on board and join us, uh, get involved with the discussion questions and things like that. Um, we're just from humble beginnings, you know, we're starting here as a, just an online video ministry and then uh, we're, we're going to we're gonna see where, where it takes us. Actually, we, we do plan on opening an actual church building. Like I say, we're in Las Vegas right now, but... Uh, Plans can change at any moment according to the Lord's will, and uh, we're just trying to follow Him and to keep uh, pursuing ministry, to keep uh, leading people to Christ, and to hopefully get a better understanding of the Bible. Uh, a lot of Christians uh, they don't spend probably they don't spend enough time in the Word, in, in my opinion. So we're trying to change that and try to get. Uh, get people more uh, interested in the Bible. So, uh, like I say, it's sermon number 48. This is going out December 4th, 2016. So this is the last month of the, the Bible study for this year. And uh, next year, we're going to see what happens next year, too. Uh, we're probably going to mix things up a little bit. We're probably going to use NASB for next year. And follow a different reading plan but um, again towards the beginning of this year 2016 um, I had uh, planned on opening a church in uh, Las Vegas right away sort of immediately and then um, you know things happen and uh, so I don't I think uh, I think it's okay I, I, you know we have that uh, that excitement to to jump in you know once you feel called but a lot of times God will call you and it'll be some time that he's going to prepare you before uh, he leads you into what he's really doing I mean God has big plans but uh, we have to do things in his timing and in his way so we'll just see what happens uh, hopefully next year we can get that building going um, the building is just important so that we can have a place to meet, which is um, public. You know, right now we're meeting at, at home in a house, so that's not uh, not everyone's comfortable meeting in, at a like at a house church. <clears throat> that's the way they do it in China, but uh, they have to do it that way in China because it's illegal to have uh, the, the authentic church. Is uh, more or less illegal in, in China. They have the state-sponsored church, but then uh, they have rules on what they can and cannot teach. But if you want to follow strictly what the Bible says, in places like China, you have to meet in, in a house uh, underground. Thank God in America, we can meet publicly and publicly proclaim uh, what the Bible teaches, the truth of the gospel and all that, at least for now. So anyway... Uh, stick with us, stay with us, keep praying for us, and uh, we're going to see what happens, but we're not going to give up. That's the one thing. We're going to keep pursuing the Lord and keep pursuing ministry. I think that's a good attitude. So let's, uh, let's pray. We're going to be in 1 John this week. Uh, let's pray. Almighty God, thank you, God. Please, uh, please give us the patience to do things your way and to pursue your will in your plan and let us put our own desires um, away you know away from us let us pursue your desire let our desire be to please you not to please just ourselves and please open up opportunities for us uh, to serve and to to have fulfilling uh, service and ministry and and help us also with the uh, the Bible study with uh, as we finish out the year we have a few books left, 1st John, 2nd, 3rd John, Jude, and Revelation. And uh, we pray for your, your blessing as we, as we get into that. And uh, we pray.
pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so, uh, yeah, we had done Gospel of John, then now we're going to be in 1 John today. And then next week, next week we're going to do 2 John, 3 John, and Jude. So it's three books in one week. At least that's the reading assignment in the, in the New Testament. I'm going to preach on who knows what. We'll figure it out. But uh, those are very short letters. And then we'll be into Revelation, and, and that'll be it for this year. And Revelation, boy, that's going to that's gonna be an interesting one, uh, hopefully. Uh, hopefully we can do it justice. It's, it's something I've been really excited about all year long. But uh, <laughs> hopefully it lives up to the to all the hype. You know, Revelation is interesting. I hope we can really study it well when we get there. Now, <clears throat> at any rate, let's let's go with First John here because this is this is a cool book too. Uh, cool letter written by John, same guy John, the son of Zebedee. He's the same guy who wrote the Gospel of John. And who wrote Revelation and Second and Third John and all that same guy? We're studying his writings for the uh, the rest of the year now. He was known as the the uh, the beloved uh, disciple, Jesus's beloved disciple. That was what he was called. And um, you know, he stood at the foot of the cross when Jesus was crucified. Not to mention, he was with Jesus during his earthly ministry he was one of the disciples and so he was taught by Jesus while um, Jesus was here on earth so he had an education far better than any theological seminary you know he had the Lord Jesus himself living and teaching him living among him and teaching teaching them um, for years you know what I mean and um, so this guy John the beloved disciple, um, Jesus entrusted uh, his mother Mary to John's care when um, when he was crucified, and um, I'm going all high tech this uh, week. These are my notes. Had it in my pocket uh, throughout the week and just jotting stuff down as I was studying this. Um, John, along with Peter, they witnessed the uh, empty tomb on resurrection morning. And uh, John also saw, touched, and ate with the resurrected Jesus. So he was, uh, he was well qualified to write this letter. Uh, like I say, he had the, the direct and intimate knowledge of Christ before and after the resurrection. And um, what a blessing. This letter, 1 John, it's brief. There's only like four, oh no, it's like how many chapters? Not that many chapters to it. And uh, it's really, it's really rich. There's five chapters in it. It includes a lot of uh, details and it, a lot of topics. Um, some of the major themes are Christ's humanity and divinity. How Christ is both fully God and fully man. And also, a major theme is that real faith leads to action. The kind of faith that saves you. Saving faith in Jesus, that's a real faith. Um, a faith that you don't just believe that Jesus is the Son of God. You know, even demons believe that. But you believe it and you decide to put your trust in God your hope for your future and your entire life and everything you've got is on Christ that's putting your faith in Jesus and that's what saves you that's when the uh, you know God will respond to that type of faith that decision to to lay your your life down on Christ and uh, give everything you have to him Surrender your life to him and your entire hope for your future is in Christ. And then that's the God will respond to that by giving you the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit in you will lead you to good works. And um, you, I mean, there's no way 
that you could have the Holy Spirit in you and not be driven to do good things, things that are pleasing to God. That'll be the desire of our heart is to please Him. And uh, <clears throat> even though we stumble and fail and fall many times, that's part of our humanity. We're still human. But the desire of our heart is a spiritual uh, desire. And, um, you know, there's this, this new man inside of us that's born again. And that, that's taking over your life. And it is it's a process. But uh, we're not going to be perfect until, until Christ makes us perfect in heaven you know but anyway um and then uh, another one of the other themes here was that love shows that you have a relationship with jesus and that that's what i'm talking about um the faith that that uh welcomes the holy spirit and then that holy spirit driving you to actions what kind of actions do you think the holy spirit is going to be driving you to the most important one of the most important really is love uh, it's the greatest commandment is to love God with you know all that you have and the second is to love your neighbor as yourself and uh, I mean a lot of us don't even love ourselves but with, when you're transformed from the inside out by the Holy Spirit then you you suddenly have this this new this new heart this this heart of flesh inside of you and this love that it's really it's God's love for us we love because he loved us first once that realization sinks in that uh, that God loves us so much and how does he how do we know God loves us so much it's because of the cross because he sent his only begotten son you know to die for us on the cross just to save us even though we don't deserve it uh, there's nothing we've done to deserve it, nothing we could possibly do to deserve it. But he doesn't want to see us die. God wants us to be saved and he wants us to live forever. So he's just going to pay the price for us, die on the cross and be risen again. And doing all this for us so that all that we have to do is just accept that gift, that gift of salvation through Jesus and we accept it by putting our faith in Jesus. And um, so that's love. Greater love has no, no one than this, that you, you lay down your life for your friends. And then Jesus also said, we are his friends if we do what he commands us. So obedience to, to the word is important. God wants, God desires obedience in us. It's an important thing. It really is. But it's not what saves you. We're not saved according to how well we can obey the Bible. We're, we're saved just by having faith in Jesus. Putting our faith in Jesus Christ, that's what saves us. We're, I mean, we're saved by grace through faith. And uh, so it is God's grace that saves us. But we receive that grace by having faith in Jesus. And then that will in turn result in good good works which is another thing that God desires in us um, so the date the date of this it was a late dating this letter of John first John um, I would put it at around 80 67 to 70 now the ESV uh, notes have it later than that I think 80 or 90 or something I have an issue with that I don't <clears throat> Personally, I don't believe that any part of the Bible was written after A.D. 70, and that's because of the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem that occurred in A.D. 70, the complete destruction of that temple. And uh, that was such, just such a hor horrible tragedy for them at the time. Um, it's, it's so bad that... Uh, for them not to mention it in the Bible would have been unthinkable. Um, they had to have, had to have finished the Bible before then. Now there's one other possibility that maybe um, maybe John wrote this after the destruction of the temple, but maybe he just didn't. He wasn't aware yet. He 
he wasn't aware of the destruction of the temple. So I, I was something that I considered this week. I think it was the first time I ever really seriously considered that. But I mean, John was writing this letter from the region around Ephesus. So somewhat removed from Jerusalem. Um, it is possible that maybe he wrote this at a time when he did not realize that the temple was already destroyed. But that's just a possibility. I don't seriously, I don't, I mean, I don't really take it that seriously. I believe this was written between AD 67 to 70, but I wouldn't rule out the possibility that maybe it was written after AD 70, but in that case, John wouldn't have heard of it. But how fast does word travel back then? Well, certainly slower than it does today. I mean, today is just crazy. Uh, speed of light, you know, information travels around the world. But um, back then, traveled by f on foot, you know, or on horseback, basically. And But I, I believe word got around. You know, they weren't just living in, in the dark. They, uh, they had their own system of news and all that. Even back then, they weren't as prim they weren't that primitive. I mean, they were s they were a sophisticated civilization um, for the day. They didn't have computers and things, but they were still they were good at what they had. So they would have, uh, I believe, they would have known if the temple was destroyed, and they certainly would have talked about it here in the Bible. So the fact that it's not in the Bible. Is clear evidence, I believe, that the entire Bible was finished before AD 70. So there you go. Uh, Christian Research Institute also, I believe, agrees with me on that point. Um, Bible Answer Man, Hank Hanegraaff, who I look up to, he's talked about that too. And I think it's what makes the most sense. Um, the genre of this letter, it's... it's um, well, it's probably a, it's a letter that's probably written to the churches in the region surrounding Ephesus. And um, other than that, I mean, it's, it's a little unique style of writing that he just sort of spouts off topics. He's just sort of free-flowing with his ideas, topic to topic. And um, he'll bring up a topic, then he'll put it down and go to something else, and then he'll come back to that same topic again with from a different angle and all that. So it's just a free flowing bunch of ideas, but um, which are clearly inspired by, by the Holy Spirit for him to write this. And um, you know, so the Holy Spirit inspired him to write all this, but he didn't tell him anything about the temple being destroyed again. So that it, it just shows you that, it shows you sometimes God gives us amazing insight into just the things that we need and then other things we are, we don't know about. You know, the possibility that maybe the temple was destroyed and he just didn't know that. But he, he was clearly inspired in this area to do something different. God, God is, I mean, we're just like <laughs> little pieces of the puzzle, but God is the one orchestrating everything. So it's, it's an amazing thing, but I think the fact, again, the fact that the temple destruction wasn't in here, it tells us that this was before that. Um, the, uh, the letter here is rich in doctrinal substance, and, and uh, so the theology is there. The theology, it's encouraging to have a better uh, understanding of theology. Uh, encouraging the readers to have a more well-developed theological understanding. And then also the ethical challenge is one of the most demanding in the entire Bible as far as ethics. Um, you know, just driving you to, to love your neighbor, to love God, to obey the commandments, to put your faith into action. That's that's so important. I mean, you're missing out on a lot if you don't. That's the thing. A lot of Christians, I think, a lot of these lukewarm Christians, which I would say that's probably the probably the majority nowadays. 
and um, that's one thing we're trying to change we really hope to change we want to get those lukewarm Christians to just plunge in because they're missing out on so much if you just if you're just kind of on the sidelines and you have one foot in the world one foot in the church or whatever that's not a that's not a good place to be that's kind of the worst place to be because if you're a Christian the world's going to reject you for being a Christian and uh, if you're a Christian who's still friendly with the world you know the friend of the world is the enemy of God and then also that you would be missing out on so much you know suppressing the Holy Spirit grieving the Holy Spirit who lives within you I'm talking about for true Christians now now there are many who call themselves Christian who are not Christian in any way but the true uh, born-again Christians who have the Holy Spirit in you many of them are still living lives that are just lukewarm you know they for some reason it's hard for them to let go and just plunge in but they're missing out on so much because plunging in is where you find you know true life you know you find the true joy peace happiness love and the power of the Holy Spirit in you that, and that fellowship with God through the Holy Spirit and just how encouraging that is how powerful that is when you pray and God answers you you know or God speaks to you and you know it and you feel it I mean sometimes it's, I can feel it physically in my body that's how powerful the sensation can be of the Holy Spirit and then the way God orchestrates events in your life to make just everything work out perfectly God causes all things to work together for good for those who, who love him and are called according to his purpose so the spiritual life you know that's that's the power of the Christian walk it's not that just that we're gonna struggle to follow this rule book and be persecuted for no reason we're gonna be struggling to follow this rule book sure and we're gonna be persecuted yeah but there's a reason it's that that peace that surpasses all understanding that joy inside which is the Holy Spirit in you driving you to do all this and driving you to go out in ministry and to make disciples of all nations which is what we're called to do and uh, I'm telling you you need to jump in you need to plunge in and get involved in ministry get organized join a group join a ministry you know get involved in church sign up for it do what you got to do and um, you're going to be rewarded for that it's going to be so satisfying to get involved in ministry join the ministry don't just sit on the sidelines you know to just watch and enjoy it no you need to get in there and do the ministry for yourself there's a place for you to serve every christian needs to be in ministry and there's many ways of serving okay and um, so, so the the uh, John here he's he's calling. It's a call. The letter is a call to having true doctrine, to obedient living, and to having fervent devotion. Think about that. And then uh, also. You know, faith in Jesus gives you assurance of eternal life. In uh, in John, First John, chapter five, verse thirteen, he says, "I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life." He's writing this so that you may know, and he's writing it to you who believe in the name of the, of the Son of God. So he's writing to Christians, those who put your faith in Jesus. You believe in Jesus, and you believe that that's your only way to, to salvation, and you accept it for yourself. For you, he's telling you, you have eternal life. Eternal life. You have it already. By very definition, you cannot lose eternal life. You cannot lose it and die. Once you have that eternal life, it is forever. It is eternal. We're talking about a spiritual life. The body dies. The body is raised again. And um, 
when we're resurrected. Just as surely as Christ was risen from the dead, we too will be risen, right? And boy, is it sure. There's a ton of apologetic evidence for the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Okay, so the context here also, First John, and he was writing to the churches, like I said, around Ephesus, and there had been uh, some, some Christians from their group who left them. So there was, a, there was actually a, quite a few of them, as I understand it, sort of a mass exodus. But these were not the, the, the real Christians. These were the false Christians, the wolves in sheep's clothing. They left from the true church. And, um, and so, and it was actually a good thing. They're, they were leaving, <laughs> it's good for them to separate, you know, get the, uh, separate the wheat from the chaff or whatever. That's nice. You don't want the, all those false teachers and everything in your midst. You want them to leave you. But they left and it may have caused some confusion and stuff. So John was just hammering home the true doctrine and all this. And also talking about how the Antichrist is in the world. I mean, we're surrounded by it. The spirit of the Antichrist is already here. Many Antichrists have already gone out into the world. And um, like in, in uh, John, First John chapter 4. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. Right? And uh, by this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. So, I mean... He's just telling them it like it is. The world is like that. We're in a spiritual war right now. And we're, yeah, we're outnumbered. There's a lot more people um, who are lost than there are that are saved. And um, we're surrounded by all these mini antichrists and the, the spirit of the antichrist, which is leading people to do the devil's will. And many times they don't even, they're not even aware of it but they're actually following the devil, okay? Anyone who's not following Jesus is following the devil. That's how it is. It, in some things there's a gray area, some things it's black and white. And with this, it's black and white because there's only one way to be saved, and that's through Jesus. One way to the Father, and that's through Jesus. And so any other thing is actually a lie, and it's being, it's being told to you by the devil and by his uh, demons and all that and the way they work and influence people and the whole system of the world is following the devil and we're a minority but greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world we have the spirit of God in us and so <laughs> that's something that's something they don't have and we have eternal life that's like I said, so we know the ending. It's a happy ending for us who put our faith in Jesus. No matter what happens in this world, it's a happy ending. And um, that's something that the enemy cannot change. And so all it is is, you know, we're here in the world. It's like, uh, you know, the, I think the devil wants you to be kind of quiet about your faith. Keep it to yourself. Maybe he wants you to be afraid about uh, what the world might do to you with persecution and all that so that you'll be keep quiet so because you're you're saved yeah but the uh, devil doesn't want you getting other people saved he doesn't want other people to be led to Jesus through your example but that's exactly what we're called to do isn't it through the great commission we're called to make disciples of all nations and to be the light and the salt to the world to be the witnesses to God you know uh, to testify to the truth of, of Jesus, right? And the reality of it and the Holy Spirit and uh, this relationship with God that we have as Christians. And so, um, so resist the devil and he will flee from you, right? And uh, so we don't need to be afraid of the devil. We need to be uh, strong in the Lord and in the power of his might and to put on the whole armor of God. Christ has won the victory. 
Okay. It is done. First John chapter one, verse one. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our own eyes, or with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands, concerning the word of life. Verse 2. The life was made manifest, and we have seen it and testified to it and proclaimed to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. So, I mean, the victory is won. It's the, the light and the life which is manifest to us through Jesus. Okay? And uh, you know what I mean? Whoever does the will of God abides forever. Chapter 2, verse 17. Chapter 2, verse 17. And the world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides forever. Um, and what's the will of God? The will of God is that we put our faith in Jesus Christ and be saved. And uh, beyond that, it's that we would be obedient and that we would be his servants. God knows what is best, and he wants us to, to do things his way and to be willing to do things his way and to not resist him and fight him and try to do things our way but to uh, to welcome God's way of doing things and just to try to please God with everything uh, that we're doing with our lives you know what I mean and again we're not saved by works we're saved by faith but whoever has faith you're doing the will of God and uh also, the will of God is our sanctification, that we would be set apart from the world and set apart for the service of God. And, um, and that's, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about, jumping in, you know, with both feet and uh, being a big part, be, being a part of this Christian life, the spiritual side of it. This not the, it's not just the side of trying to follow the rules. Um, do's and don'ts it's not that i mean all things are uh, permissible but not all things are beneficial the bible says that doesn't it i mean there's a there's a legalism saying that you need to follow all these rules to be right with god and that's not right and then there's a, something called antinomianism which says that well we have faith so it doesn't matter what we do and that's not right either Okay, it's the truth is somewhere in the middle, but the truth is a is a relationship with God through the Holy Spirit, a personal, intimate fellowship with God. And once you're once you're, you know, impacted by that, once you're exposed to, to the Spirit of God, it would change you. It's going to change you and uh, it's going to change you from the inside out to where your desire changes, your desires to not to please yourself anymore now you desire to please God and you realize that it's like the the pearl of the the the, the parable of the pearl the, the guy who found the one pearl of great price and he went and, and he found it in a field and he went and sold all that he had and bought that field remember that parable it's like you found something the value of it is just beyond all measure you know, it's the, the love of God, the power, the life, and, and the spirit of God, the beauty of it, and the power of it. And it's better than anything in this world. So you would sell all that you have. You would give up everything you have for just to have that, just to have Jesus. You would, once you see him for who he is, and you realize it, and once you've you, you felt that connection in you, then that changes everything. And um, so you don't think that it's, you don't think you're giving up something when you're giving up these old bad habits and sins. You, you're, you, you think, um, you know, you count everything as loss, right? All those sin, that's, you know, being trapped in a sinful life, that's what's lost. And to gain is to have Christ. 
and you would gladly give up all those things. And, and then once you've been impacted by the Spirit, you're not going to even be happy with those things anymore. You're not going to be satisfied by sin. And so it's going to become a filthy thing. And uh, then the satisfying thing to you is God, to, to know God and his, to do His will. Knowing God and doing His will. That's what satisfies you. That's why you don't want to be living on the edge between the world and, the, and God. You want to jump right in to the Christian life and the Christian faith and realize what, you know, how great can it be? Who knows? It, it's, every day is an adventure of knowing God. And uh, you need to jump in and, and, and study it and know so I apologize that uh, I mean I've been getting on talking about this stuff I had planned on, on talking about chapter 3 and I haven't even talked about it yet and <laughs> our little our time here is almost over so let's just touch upon it real quick mm. chapter 3 see what kind of love the father has given to us that we should be called children of God and so we are the reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him beloved we are we are God's children now and what we will be has not yet appeared but we know that when he appears we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is and everyone who thus hopes in, in him purifies himself as he is pure Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared in order to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous, as he is righteous. Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning, for God's seed abides in him, and he cannot keep on sinning, because he has been born of God. By this it is evident who are the children of God, and who are the children of the devil. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God nor is the one who does not love his brother. That's what I've been talking about. It's, um, it's saying it here even more clearly than I ever could. And we say, whoever makes a practice of sinning, that's where you accept sin and you pursue a sinful lifestyle and you're accepting of a sinful lifestyle. That is not of God. And that is, that is of the devil. Okay? And, uh, but whoever practices righteousness, those are the children of God. That's not saying that children of God never sin, because we do. But it says, no one born of God makes a practice of sinning. So that's what it is. Um, we sin by mistake uh, because we're human, all right? And we're not perfect yet. But our desire is righteousness our desires to please God that's because we are children of God and God has put that desire in us and when he we put the Holy Spirit in us and so that's how Christians whenever we sin we have a, a we feel guilty about it we have a, a good conscience that keeps us feeling guilty a sincere faith a good conscience and a, a pure heart so that um, uh, so that when we sin, we feel bad. And what do we do? We, we repent, meaning we stop it. We don't keep doing that sin. We repent, we turn away from it. We're sorry we did it, we turn away from it. Okay? And we pray for forgiveness. We ask God to forgive us and to strengthen us and keep us away from those sins. And He does. Now, for many people, they go back again and they sin again. And it's just cycle over and over and they feel bad again they repent they turn away they ask forgiveness right and uh, confess your sins to God he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins but 
that's different. We're not happy living in this filthy sinfulness. Every time we're exposed to it, we feel bad. We want out of there. That's the, that's the child of God. And if you want to be, if you want to live the real, uh, powerful Christian life, then you don't want to keep going back to those sins. You want to get away from that, and you want to draw close to God, and to be filled with the Holy Spirit, and uh, to live obedient to God. All right, that's our goal. That's what we want. And so, how do we do that? Well, just practically speaking, I call it the uh, spiritual disciplines. The, the five ones, which are uh, prayer, fasting, Bible study, fellowship, and ministry. Those are the five that I, I always like to talk about. So make it a habit in your life. We pray. We pray for strength and uh, our faith to grow and our obedience to grow. And uh, we pray for forgiveness of our sins and many things. Fasting is a good one. Uh, fasting, I think most people don't fast very much. But it's useful, especially when you're dealing with uh, big things you, that you need to overcome. Fasting is like the, the secret weapon that you can pull out at any time to overcome, you know, powerful things. Um, prayer, fasting, Bible study. Come on, guys, guys and girls, we need to study the Bible. That's what we're doing. You got to be exposed to the Word of God. Get the Word of God. Get into the Word of God and get the Word of God into you. Get to where you can memorize scriptures and uh, to where you can recite things. It, it's so powerful. And um, get on a, a reading plan. Study the Bible. The entire Bible every year is what I would recommend. Uh, get into the Bible study in a big way. That's going to make a huge difference in your life. Fellowship is another important one. You gotta, you gotta attend church. You got to 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 go to church, and you gotta spend time um, in fellowship. Find other Christians. Usually, you're gonna find them at church, right? So spend more time with them in church. Take an interest in people at church. Uh, don't just go to church and then go home. Go to church and talk to people, right? Before, go there early. Show up early and leave late. And uh, stay long, talk to people, and you know a lot of times people are some pe some people aren't very social, but you can't always control what the other person's gonna do. You need to be the one that takes the uh, the initiative, uh, usually, and just go up and shake someone's hand, so say God bless you, introduce yourself, get their name, ask them some questions. What do you do for a living? What are you you know? What are your uh, things you like to do on your free time? Whatever. That's important so that we can get to know each other at church. So that we can uh, find friends and be friends with each other. We need to be like that. And, um, you know, if you when you find people, they're into something that you're into. Like maybe you like fishing and then this guy says he likes going fishing. Guess what, guys? You found a friend. Go fishing together. And... That's, these are just simple things, you know. I mean, the biggest thing we have in common is uh, that we're all Christian. So that's something we can talk about right off the bat. But uh, uh, it might be hard at first but for some people, but try to do it. You know, try to introduce yourself to someone at church and just be friendly. Um, get to know people. We want to be surrounded by the right kind of people, the people that are building us up and edifying us, not the people that are tearing us down. Okay? And then ministry. Ministry, you got to get involved in ministry. I call it a spiritual discipline because your spirit will be lifted so much when you get involved in ministry and you start doing that. That is going to energize your spiritual life and it's, it's going to it, like electrify you, basically, like nothing else. Um, because the Holy Spirit is working in you and through you in ministry. God gives us gifts, spiritual gifts, and God wants us to use those gifts, gifts to minister to others. And so uh, <clears throat> just doing it, it's going to be so satisfying and rewarding 
and you're going to grow so much in your faith. And that's what we want. So we want to uh, keep growing. And you can't say, you can't just sit back now and say that, uh, like, oh, I don't really feel that that uh, good about my walk with Christ. And you can't just sit back and do it because now you have, I give you at least five things to think about, five spiritual disciplines. Okay, don't forget them. Uh, prayer, fasting, Bible study, fellowship, and ministry. Get involved in those things and watch your spiritual life grow. Watch your Christian life grow. And um, so that's it for now. Uh, First John is fantastic. Only five chapters. It's short. It's to the point, and it is powerful. And I encourage you. I would encourage you to read it, read it again, and read it again. And uh, we'll see what happens next week. We're going to be in second, third, second John, third John, and Jude for next week. And uh, let's pray. Almighty God, thank you, God, for this sermon. Please help us, really help us to grow in our faith and in our obedience. And let us be obedient in love, having love for each other, having love for the church and building up the church. And help us to make friends with other Christians. Make us friendly people that will uh, go out and actively be kind and friendly to other people at church so that we can have that fellowship with other believers that we need. And uh, also help our prayer life, our Bible study, um, fasting when, when appropriate and also ministry and just God bless us in all all these ways we want to be Christians that are you know on fire for God filled with the Holy Spirit and um, doing great things for you God we want to be uh, your faithful servants and obedient to you and please keep encouraging us and strengthening us we pray in the name of Jesus amen <laughs>